what's going on now is Leslie is raising the cover of the primary mirror. Oh, and don't be shocked and or surprised to see the horrible tarnish because it hasn't been, uh, the mirror has not been resilvered since approximately a year, well, a little less than a year. But, as you might be pleasantly surprised to discover, the actual uh, tarnish factor does not have a significant impact on the viewing as you would think. It's a reduction in brightness, but realize you still retain the resolution of a fu of full 70 inches. And that's a good thing. Okay, so now is the time to say open sesame. Revealing the, mir the primary mirror, albeit tarnished, to the world. And there we have it, ladies and gentlemen. Oh, it doesn't even, it's not even that disgusting. I was expecting the worst. Well, you can obviously see there's, uh, there's streaking, but believe it or not, repeat, believe it or not, the light gathering ability of this telescope has been reduced only from about a 70 inch to approximately a 35 or so inch mirror. So all is not lost. All is not lost. All right, now Leslie has disengaged the clutches. That is the altitude that is up and down, azimuth side to side. And the telescope is going to be brought up to its upright position. All right, now the telescope is being pointed upward. This is done with the use of, use of counterweights. Right, what we're going to do now is initiate the drive system. Leslie is plugging in the 12 volt uh, cigarette lighter plug, now connecting it with the, uh, the 24 volt system. Now she's turning on the switch. And now we should be go, uh, all systems go. All right, at this point, we have pointed our telescope to its upright position approximately to the North Star, although it's still light. So we can't actually align on Polaris, but we've got it darn close. 